others prowling out there and others watching that are not signed in. They're so, prowling, are they? <laughs> well, they could be prowling. Anyway, I'm good sorry, to I see you, Irene, and anybody else who's out there, feel free to sign in and say hello. If you don't want to do that, you please don't feel like you have to. But it's always nice to know who's watching. So I got a phone message. This I saw that you called this morning, Irene. I haven't checked my messages yet. But um, I will, and I will get back to you on whatever your question was. We have really fun stuff to do today. Oh, my gosh. Um, what did I do there? Well, I'll show you what we're going to do. We are going to work with Elisa Horton in interference. I know it sounds like a it sounds like a dispute, a dispute of some sort, but it's not. We are going to work with the Lisa Horton Interference Inks today, and we are going to do some beautiful things. Can you see the pearlescent shine in that? Do you want me to come in? Yeah, come in a little bit. I don't have to extend my arm quite so far. There we go. We got Debbie and Margie here today. And look at the beautiful shine on this card. Hi, Glenn. Good to see you, friend. This is the Lisa Horton Interference Ink on white paper. This is the Lisa Horton Interference on black paper. Same, Hi, same ink pad, right? I believe so, but I'm not certain. But these are the same ink pad. This is on white. Three different colors, although I used very similar colors. You got kind of that teal down here, the blue and the green. And look what you get when you do that on black. <laughs> so we're going to have some fun. I think we'll start with the stenciling and let people wander in. Let's start with that today. Let's take a look at what we're going to be working with. Whew. In fact, I think we'll start by talking about the colors. Okay. I have some color swatches here, so... I'm going to try and match these up with the swatches so that I can see where we're going. Well, there's that's convenient right here on top. <laughs> Come on in closer, Margie. Okay. okay. This is the Lisa Horton Sapphire and Gold Shimmer Pad. You can see why it's called Sapphire and Gold. We have Sapphire Blue on one side gold when it's on black. I'm going to put the swatches together with the colors. And then we have, this one's called Pink Champagne. I have one that's not labeled, so there's a method to my madness. I want to figure out which one of my swatches is not labeled. This one is sort of a green, a light Pastel green on one side and vivid pink on the other when it's done on. Now, see, these pads don't have two sides to them. It's one color, but it's one color when it's done on black, and it's one color when it's done on white. So this is the pink champagne. This one is not labeled. I'm thinking it might be that fruit salad right there, but I don't know for sure. This one is Royal Truffle. That's it right there. On one side, we have kind of a brown, coppery, purpley. It's an interesting color on the, on the, oops, let's go this way. Royal Truffle, Royal Truffle. I yeah. got a lot of blue when I, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting. Huh. This looks backwards. Oh, is that the black? That's the black. Huh. We have to look at that some more. I might have to actually redo that color swatch. 
Okay, this one is Sweet Treat. There we go. Yellow on one side, bright yellow. In fact, it's way more yellow than it looks like in the color swatch. And then definitely pink on the other. This one is pumpkin spice. I just saw that one. Orange on one side and blue on the other. And we have fruit salad. Oh, this is this one. Fruit salad, which is gold-ish on one side and black paper. And it's kind of a pink on the other. I noticed when I did the blacks, when I did the black a couple weeks ago, um, uh -huh. that I had to put the layer on twice Yeah. in order for it to be really pronounced. Here is Magic Garden, which is definitely green and definitely purple. Are they pretty? Okay, we have, oh, that's the royal truffle I was wondering about. This is Galaxy Dream, which is right here. And when it's on... Some of these just don't look quite right to me. When it's on black, it's purple. And when it's on white, it's kind of a gray tone, gray silver. Oh, it's actually blue. Yeah. A couple of these that, hmm. Crushed velvet definitely matches. We have gold and we have pink. We have, this must be teal twist. There's teal and the most definite pink. We have crushed velvet shimmer. One that Jordan wrote on. <laughs> Jordan, you're wrong. <laughs> okay, well, my color swatches are, that's definitely the right one. Okay, so what do we have that's not with one? Galaxy Dream. Yeah. No. Well, some of these are just crazy. We're going to make up swatches to these right now and solve this mystery. We have black. We have white. Oops. Those are cards. I don't want to waste a card. Just want a piece. I need a piece of that card stuff, Margie. Which one? The white. Oh, the white one. <laughs> all the way. Almost a creamy texture uh, look to it. Just very light ivory. And it makes some new color swatches. I'm going to cut this paper in the white in two by four inch strips. And I'm going to cut the black in two inch strips, two by two. And what that's going to allow me to do is glue a two by two right over the white. Okay. I'm going to cut this into some two by twos. We'll just whip out new swatches for these two so we know what we've got. Okay. We're going to start with Cherry Bomb. 
which is definitively red on white paper. That's as red as it gets. And now we're going to put the same color on black. And what we will end up with is what it looks like on the top there. The pen and label this. This is Cherry Bomb. I want to glue this on. Whoop. Hello. Say hi to Thelma. Who's it? Thelma. Oh, hey Thelma. And Annette, if you didn't. I said hi to Annette already. Okay. okay. Hi Annette. <laughs> that is a really good color swatch now. So we didn't have one for that. But that's beautiful. Okay. Let's do another one. This time we're going to do warm chestnut. Let's write on here before we ink it, shall we? <laughs> There's the thought. These are really cool inks. You note one pad is called warm chestnut. Beautiful shimmering color and a purplish tone. And we're going to take the same color and work on black. And the ink first goes down, and there's a lot of it. It appears to be a different color than it kind of settles into the color it wants to be. This is kind of a coppery color now. See that? That's pretty. Let's put this down. There we go. I like that. Yeah. And we have a good color swatch for that one. Okay. Next, we have Royal Truffle. We're going to do that on our white. Should be kind of a brown color. Let's see what we get. You know what's interesting about this ink? That you can actually see the highlights of the other color in it. See how it's definitely brown? But look, when you change the angle, you can see the other highlights in it. Shimmer. And now let's put some on black. And the black is absolutely blue. So we have a brown and a blue together. And royal truffle. Isn't that cool? Can they be used on a stamp? Yes, 
They can absolutely be used on stamps. We used them um, when we did the <clears throat> Merry Christmas with the um, snow, kind of looked like a cloche, technically, snow globe. Yeah. And those were the inks that I used. So you saw them on white paper mainly, but the, the stamps wipe off beautifully. And that's Royal Truffle. And then we have one left, Galaxy Dream. So I did have... Yep, this was labeled wrong. Let's label wrong. This one looks right. It didn't have a label on it. It was Cherry Bomb. And this one is Galaxy Dream. I'm going to do this last one. Galaxy Dream is kind of a deep purple on white. And let's see what we get on black. These are no nice, juicy stamp pads, so I like that a lot. We do not have refills for these at this point. I know you're going to ask me that, so let me just pop that out there. I have not seen where they're making refills yet. Well, that's interesting. There we go. Purple and kind of a different purple. <laughs> Let me get rid of this now. You see how I get my fingers so icky looking. So these are called interference inks. This one was Cloud Nine. Nope, this one was Galaxy Dream. Okay. Your color swatches can be very useful in figuring out what colors you want to use and what effects you can expect. So I think we should do some stenciling. Let's just jump right into it. I'm going to use a stencil by Card Making Magic. I believe we have a few of these in the store. We may have used them up in the, in the um, Jamie Powders class we did. If you've taken that, you already probably own this stencil. I think there might be one or two in the store. I'm going to tape this in place. I could just get my stencil board out. That would be a reasonable thing to do, but I've not always been reasonable. I'm going to get some inks out here. I want to use this one. I want to use this one, a little different blue, and I want to use the green one. <laughs> this one. So we're going to use these three. Move these others out of my way for now. Um, let's see. I can move my board over a little bit. Trying to move. Um, it would actually be good if you could move a little bit this way. There we go. It's always such Perfect. a jerk when you have to move it. Okay. 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 I'm going to put some green down. 
starting with our white. Now I'm going to recommend to you uh, the same thing that um, I watched a Lisa Horton video earlier today. And she recommends that if you're using her inks, that you're using either flat applicators or you're using a stencil brush style applicator. And I'm going to recommend to you that you put these inks down pretty heavy so that you get the pretty um, iridescent effect. So let's get them on there pretty good. Uh, this paper um, is probably not as good for this. Um, it pills. And they were in the brush over it. So we'll probably have to go back to our hunky dory paper. So I think I'll try and finish it then. Okay. I'll do this one first. Guess I have the brush for that. <laughs> Let me get it clean. I'm looking at a glass surface so I can wipe off any extra so I am not worrying about going over the edge here. All right. And then let's take one of our applicators, get a clean sponge head. <laughs> Margie's granddaughter Emma came into the office one day and she was bored. Margie put her on cleaning all my sponges. <laughs> it kept her busy for a really long time. Kids and water, man. <laughs> oh, I love that teal color. Isn't that beautiful? So if you love this stencil, check. If you took our Jamie class, check your supplies. Because I think we, you should have this stencil, maybe. Okay, let's see how this turned out. Now, this time, I got beautiful shimmer and shine by applying plenty of ink. I love that, isn't it? They're pretty? really juicy too. So it's not like you're yeah. gonna run out of ink by giving it a little bit of extra. Okay, now let's do exactly the same on our black stamping card. This time I'm using the stamping card from Hunky Dory. So I shouldn't have the same pilling problem. And we're just going to use the same colors. So this is that beautiful tealy color. Don't be afraid to just get the ink to it. We want that beautiful pearlescent shine. Let's see. Let me get all of that. Then I had a little more up here, didn't I? Using the same colors, roughly the same spaces. Okay. Now we want the blue. Oops. 
to do with the blue one I had. There it is. I'll come in with the blue. It up here. And now we're going to come in with the green. Looks absolutely green this way, doesn't it? coat of it on there so we okay I'm liking that let's see how this looks when we peel that off <laughs> it's funny it's kind of deceptive because you see the stencil and you see the colors on the white stencil but look what we get when we peel this off Isn't that pretty? Now what we saw as green before was this one. And now we're seeing as green the ones that was one of the blues and one of the one of the blues is purple. Isn't that gorgeous? Now I really put the ink to this. You can see it really kind of settling on top there so we're going to have to let that and our white one the white one's actually already pretty dry but we're going to let those dry a little bit before we do anything with those and i have a stencil here that is just full of ink color and it always bugs me to just wipe that off when i wonder if i could get another print out of it so we're going to try. <laughs> I'm going to spritz. Huh? Do you want a brayer? Uh, that wouldn't hurt. That'd be good. I'm going to spritz my cardstock a little bit. I do not know about the behavior of this cardstock because I'm not using my regular cardstock. I'm not sure what we're going to get with this one, but let's just try it. Uh, Glenn would like to know if this can be used on velvet. Uh, well, if you're never gonna wash it, it's water reactive ink, so it would wash right out of fabric. Hmm, a little bit, a little bit. We didn't really get a great print. A little bit. What's funny is there still seems to be a lot of ink on there, but it just didn't pull on this card stuff. So I'm going to set that off to the side. Let's clean this off. You want a couple of paper towels? Yeah, underneath it'd be great. But it is water reactive, so it comes right off my stencil. This gives you a few. Sure, it's pretty on the paper towel. <laughs> That's pretty good. 
and clean up my glass mask so we're not transferring color, unwanted color. The talk, the talking is sort of interrupting what you're doing. I'm not sure what you're, what you're saying, Thelma. Talk to me. Tell me what your concern was. So I'll be talking. Maybe because I asked if you needed a couple of things. Oh. Maybe it for her. I'm not speaking up loudly because I don't want to interrupt what you're doing. Just sounds so like the border be... paintings for Annette. <laughs> I think it would. I think you could. Well, I can brush it on with a brush. In fact, I'm going to do that next. Let's take a look at these now that they've dried a little bit. Thomas said the radio. Oh, the radio. Oh. Alexa, shut off. <laughs> we didn't even think about that. It I forgot the about background. the radio. I've had it on all day out here. Thank you. Thank you, Thelma. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what it was. Look at that. Isn't that just amazing, guys? It should be gone now. Wow, sir. Look at that. Isn't that just, that's so pretty. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for alerting me to that, Thelma. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's try. We're going to use a different material than we've ever used before. I want to show you what I have here today. I don't think we've ever used... Uh, memory box die in, or uh, embossing folder in class, but we're going to use one today called 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 Gracious Floral, and it is gorgeous. This is the stencil we're going to use or the um, embossing folder. This is a 3D embossing folder, and wait till you see how much 3D effect you get with this. Wowzer. <laughs> that says, I appreciate you thinking of me, Glenn, but think of me less. <laughs> okay, look at this embossing folder. Come in a little bit on that, Margie. It's not... There we go. Look at the depth of the embossing you get with this 3D folder. Now, don't forget. That one pooped out, Grandma. <laughs> don't forget to spritz your cardstock because you'll get ripples along the edges if you don't spritz it because it really, really pushes the paper. But isn't that gorgeous? And here's the black one. Isn't that a beautiful folder? And just as a side benefit, they're also less expensive than Lisa Horton. So that's fun. Now, let's see what we have that's kind of a green in the black. This one's a little bit green, isn't it? We're going to use this. Or try this at least. We're going to use this on our leaves. This looks like this did not get washed out good last time it got used. There we go. <laughs> looks like it's been used with Jamie Horton or with um. Mm -hmm. Jamie Rogers powders. Oh, it was. Probably. When it was when we were doing them. that. When we were doing that sample and you guys wanted to know how that would work with the Jamie powders, remember? That's exactly what it was. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny to grab this pink ink pad. This is the one I'm using so I can do my green leaves.
Now there, uh, this embossing folder comes with a die that just cuts out the big flower. It just cuts out the big flower so you can 3D it if you want to. But there is, and I did not buy it, but I'm going to because I've decided I really love this pattern. I'm going to buy the stamp set that carries the full size die. So we can do the same thing we do with the Lisa folders and cut out the entire flower. Now look at that. I'm dipping in the pink and I'm getting a beautiful green leaf. Isn't that something? It's like playing with the waxes, but so many more colors. There's a total of 12 pads in this collection. Right now, today, we have all 12. I can't speak for tomorrow because they sell out really, really fast on Etsy. So if you want to give these inks a try, I recommend you race in and purchase at least three or four of them so you have some color choices. We can look at the swatches again at the end so you can make your choices of which ones you want. I already have more on order because they do go so fast. Boy, I like this green. I used blue on my last card because I didn't see that I had a green, but I didn't have my color swatches out. See, there's the beauty of the swatches. I could see what my choices were. It only takes, as you saw, just a few minutes to make color swatches by putting them on white and black paper and just attaching the two so you can see that. I'm using a water brush. Which makes this really quick and easy. And you have really good control over your colors. Now, last time I did this with my first card, I did a pink flower. This time I'd like to try and do a gold flower. And then do my little accent flowers in pink. Every time I think I'm done with the green, I look around and there's so much detail in this that I have to go back and at other elements. Okay. It just seems so strange to dip into a pink ink pad to get green. Oh. <laughs> I keep saying that, but it is continuing to be strange. Okay, here we go. I've got my green. I'm going to set that aside. So if I have to go back to green, I'll know where it is. I want gold this time. I want my... Yeah, here's one. No, that's not it. Which one is this? Warm chestnut. Warm chestnut's pretty gold. It's supposed to be a blue, but it sure does look. Maybe I need to make a new color swatch of this one, too. Let's just see what it looks like here. I want to see if it's going to be gold. Well, it's most definitely gold. There we go. See? That's what I want. So I'm going to clean my pink off my water brush just by running some good water through it. Wow, there's really a lot of ink in there.
and <laughs> I'm going to use this to make my flower golden. I'm getting a nice iridescence from the gold and from the green, really. Even though I'm not using a ton of ink because I'm using the water brush, it tends to go on in a lighter coat. I'm using the water brush because I like the control the water brush gives me. Couple little buds here, a partially open bud up here. If I wanted a more intense color, I could use those black brushes. Show you which ones again. I could use these to lay down my color if I wanted a more intense color than I'm getting from the water brush. And because those come in all sizes, of course, that's a nice way to go. A couple buds here at the bottom. Okay, there's a green one. See, didn't I tell you that I need to keep my green handy because I'd probably see another job for it. <laughs> I see it. <sighs> Do you think the control is because of the size of the bristles on the brush? Probably, somewhat. Um... I have another one here, and I found it actually a little frustrating because it was like it was too small. So I went to a little bit bigger one, and I'm just not having any trouble controlling the, the ink. So that's good. Going back to our green here and our pink pad. <laughs> I hope this project is demonstrating for you the colors. That's what I wanted to really show you is what you can do with these and you know get a good capture of the colors now I want to actually use something that looks pink so I'm going to put this back here and I want one that looks pink on the black here's one i'm going to use this galaxy dream that comes across pink purple <laughs> comes off gray and white but we have these little little flowers little accent flowers i want to do in pink guess i just left one of them this time Okay, and now I need a color for the inside of my flower. And what am I going to use for that? Maybe a dark purple, a darker purple. 
This one looks green. <laughs> We're going to use this to get purple. He's purple. Okay. This has a real antique kind of look to it, I think. Don't you, Margie? Yeah. I think that kind of looks antique. I can see why Glenn was asking about doing something on velvet. Because can you imagine going really old school and doing some of this um, 3D embossing on your black velvet floral and then painting your velvet it really doesn't dry any darker diane but i could put another coat on and the other thing i could do if i wanted it to come out darker so let's go to which one did i use for my green now if i want it to come out darker i can hmm. And that's that one. I can go over it again. Which one was the green? There it is. No? Yeah. I think this was the one that turned green. Or I could use a brush. Maybe I need a little one. I could use a brush that is not picking up the water. It's just picking up ink only. And then I can get it darker. So either two coats. Or I think I just changed color. But that's okay. It actually looks pretty good. I think I changed colors on that one. Now I have to add a little of that to some of my other leaves. I didn't get the right one. It does look fun, though. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how I can get the color to look darker. Um, what do I do with the lid to that? Huh. Okay. Well, let's wipe these off. Am I going crazy? What did I do with the lid? I feel that way every time I turn around. I okay. couldn't find the scissors downstairs when packaging, and I just had them in my hand. I could not figure out where they went. I looked, and I went ahead, and I said, well, I'll just do this instead, and I sent the things out to mail. Okay. It was under the packing slip and my scissors were right there. What I didn't notice is that when I lifted it, that they were sitting there. So I turn around and there magically they're there. See, there just is. like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go to white. Let's do some on white. Ah. Come on. <laughs> Look at my hands. It looks like I've been beating on the ends of my fingers with a hammer. <laughs> okay. Glenn's writing to you. Oh. I kind of think that anything is worth trying at least once to see if it works. <laughs> I 
I think it's a great idea. And I think it'd be even more fun if he'd do dogs playing poker. Mm -hmm. Or one of the sad clowns. Yeah. Yeah, that would work too. But dogs playing poker. Okay. Why would they I put bet. sad clowns in pictures anyways? I don't know. Why well, have sad clowns? That's what I want to know. I have sad clowns to fall. True. Look at the difference in color, guys, between using that uh, stencil type brush and the water pen. Look at the difference in color. Isn't that something interesting? Maybe I'm just easily entertained. That could be too. Okay. Roberta just got a set of these to start playing with. Them. Yes. She was very excited about getting them. I'm curious how she's liking them. I miss having her here on the chat. I'm not sure why she's not chatting. I know that there were some technical difficulties, but I'm not sure what's going on. We miss you, Roberta. I know you're watching. Now and again, at least. Maybe not right at this moment. But we miss you. We want you back on chat. Mary R. is doing well, guys. Got a nice message from her. you did it on velveteen paper, you could emboss the design onto the velveteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're about done with the green for now. Until I discover 47 more areas I didn't paint. Okay. I'm going to do my flower in bright yellow. Get enough green out of my brush to get in the yellow. I might need more water, Margie. Okay. If you don't mind, thank nope. you. Okay, I think we'll use this bright, bright yellow. And we're going to use this, like this pink champagne for our little flowers. Which is 
try this just for the heck of it. Let's just brush. But that looks pretty. Thank you, Marty. You just set that here. <laughs> it should be right by your hand. It's, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> okay. See the difference in color between using that stencil style brush and the water brush? It's remarkable. Yeah, I don't need something. I use another one. I think it's a pink champagne out here. Flowers. Be the center of this and pink over the yellow it gives it kind of a red cast, which is nice. And let's get a little more green here. Did something the wrong color. <laughs> yep. 
do it all the time in it. All the time. Okay. Need a nice shimmer. All right. Let's make a card out of this. Okay, green light. These little cards. Okay, so green card stock. That's actually not a little card, that's five by seven. Let's get a little card. <laughs> <clears throat> That's good. All right. Get my trimmer handy here. I cut my green hard stock down to be three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. To allow a little order. Could use, well, maybe not. I was going to say I could use a little more, but let's see here. For some reason, that's not quite straight. This side's not straight either. I grabbed a bad piece of paper. Better, not perfect. Experiencing the twin connection, I can lay my scissors down right in front of me, right in front of me, and then spend 20 minutes looking for them. <laughs> okay. I'm going to cut my flower design down. I'm going to have a small piece of paper, so. Come in quite a ways. Let's see how this looks on our green. Needs a little more off the border. That's pretty good. I think a tiny bit more off screen. Okay. Let's try this and this. That's going to be pretty. Okay. Look how deep that embossing still is, even after all the work we've done on it. And One thing I think is special about these pads is that we get that nice shimmer effect with these pearlescents that we don't have in our Ranger line. So I think they're a nice supplement to the oxides and the distressings. Mm -hmm. There we go. 
could use a little grating of some sort, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's get our black one, wherever it has gone. There it is. Marie says the colors are intense and bright like spring. And let's make this black one up. I need an accent color for this one, Margie. How about a, can you find me a pink on the wall? A light pink or a... Yeah, a light pink, I think. Will this work? Yeah, perfect, actually. Okay. That was a big hole chopped out of it. <laughs> well, I figured you could use the non-hole part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's some envelopes that are tucked into my collection of cards here. Okay. Pretty. All right. I want this to be about four and a half. Three and a half. So our color test on the back. <laughs> a total of 12 pads in the collection. They run just a little less than $10, I believe. Even nicer if I put it on black. Oh, I have a little black card though. I certainly do have a little card that can be cut down to be the right size. Oh, that looks even better. <laughs> okay. Oops. Probably don't need to. Turning it just a little bit so you can get the full view. It actually goes like this, though. Okay. Let's go back to our embossed card. Oh, our stenciled card. That is just so pretty. It's 
get another one of those five by sevens out here. Do I want white behind this, or do I just want to go for it? I did one before. So I put white on it, and white does look nice. So let's see. This is 5 by 7. So if I'm going to layer this, this has to be 6 and a half by 4 and a half. Some paper down oh. under it. That sounded almost like a runaway kind of sound. Like your art just got up. And oh, that like Ooh. oh my gosh. Wow. Say good night to Annette. Good night, Annette. Wow, wow, wow. I just can't believe how pretty this is. Would you look in the Jamie drawer? And... Get me that little packet of um, happy birthdays and stuff that are already cut out. Hopefully we'll have something in there that will... Is that many That's things? many things. That... I need a bigger one. Okay. Here's our previous sample. And this one. You can see that I went much darker on the inks with this one. And it's a much better result. Although they're both pretty, this is a much better result. Thank you. Stayed white. I guess we'll cut one. Once I have my happy birthday die right here. Here. You want to cut this for me? Sure. Thanks. Okay. We'll go ahead and do our other one. Oh, that's pretty. I mean, you might cut a couple of them if you would. Cut a couple white. Yeah. Okay.
I really need solid colors. I'm just I'm sorry, Thelma, I have not gotten the Christmas list out to you. My printer in the office has died, and I need my printer to convert files to PDF. So I've been kind of running crazy without it, but I think we'll get it done today. So. Okay. <laughs> um. Huh? Can I have one more? Yep. One more than the one that I'm working on. Yeah. So I need three. to edit this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. Well, we have a new printer ready to install. It just, it takes time to do stuff. And Margie's been trained. Margie does that. I don't do that. <laughs> it's technology and I don't do that. So uh, she's been training Marianne. So it takes a little longer to get things done sometimes, but. It'll be worth it in the long run when Mary's Mary's doing a very good job for the amount of time she's been at it. She's very proud of her progress. Hi, Sharma. How are you doing, friend? Well, it kind of petered out there at the last little tiny bit because there wasn't quite enough. Oh, not enough paper. Paper. <laughs> yeah, I can trim it off if necessary. Does that, that looks work? good. That looks really good. Okay. Do you need any more? Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe we want this one to go this way. I don't know. I might have to put a, I think I'm going to have to put a white sheet under this. Let's see. A little bit of white under it. <laughs> I can't believe I'm asking you this as I'm sitting back down, but could you maybe shadow it with your other... The white. Happy birthday. Well, I was going to use the other Which one. Which would mean that I have to make it. another one. That's why I was laughing. But um, I could. It's not going to show on this yeah. background. I think what I need to do is put this in here. And then maybe a little bit of this. <laughs> so... It's always fun coming up with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Okay. So let's try about three inches of that by about a 
or half. <clears throat> okay, I have another job for you if you have time. Yep. I'm going to put some sticky specks on here and then cut this mat to fit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, where is your sissy specs? Is it near you? Yes. Okay. I have resorted to the old kind because I didn't want to take any more folios out of stock and I used all mine, so I have the old ones in there. Okay. Okay. I think we'll do this one this way. Let's put this one on some sticky specs too, please. Okay, now let's see what we've got here. All right, we have completed our projects. Margie's working on layering that one up for me. But let's see what we've got so far. We've got this one, which is beautiful. We've got this one, which I couldn't be happier with. That's just pretty. We've got this one. These need little greetings on them too. This one, we've got this one, which was my trial sample. We've got this one, and then we've got the ones that Margie's working on. Let's look at our look at our um, color swatches again for those of you who may be contemplating which ones you want to get. Let's. Look at our swatches so you can see what colors you get with these. I think you'll find making swatches is a very useful endeavor. Not to mention the fact it's a little fun. I said there's 12 in total. So if I got all the swatches picked up, there should be 12 here. As we look at these, this side is the white, and the other side is the black. Let's hold them in order here so you can see what you get. I love the vibrancy of the white tones too. She really did a good job coming up with a nice selection of colors. But it's fun. If you look, you can turn those a little bit and you still see the highlights even in the white tones. See that? That's cool. This one is Teal Twist. This one is Pumpkin Spice. That beautiful, gorgeous blue and the orange. This one we just looked at had a kind of purple raspberry-ish sort of cast in the black one. This one is Sweet Treat. I just love that yellow. And then the purple is very vibrant in this one. Then we have Galaxy Dream, which has kind of a slate blue-gray against purple. Or pink against pink, really. It's kind of pink on the black. Here's the Magic Garden. It's green. We have the blue, sapphire, and gold. That's how we got the yellow tones. This is gold. Here is warm chestnut. Here is cherry balm. I love the vibrancy of this one on both sides. It's beautiful. Pink champagne. 
if you need to make some choices, one of the recommendations I would have is there are a lot of them that look kind of purple on the black side, so choose some that give you different effects on black. This one's the one we use to get the green tone. We have fruit salad. Has that kind of coral. And it actually has a bit of green cast too. Maybe a little more tealish. And here's one that's bright gold. Here's crushed velvet. Is pink. Almost fuchsia and bright gold. And then we have the royal truffle which is kind of a tan color and blue. So there you go. How are we doing on that? Oh, Margie just got this one put together for us. And do you just want the specs on with no matting behind it? Right. Okay. Yeah, I think it really shows on that one. Yeah, I think so. So too. we'll show you our final product here. Thank you, Margie, for doing that. put my glue line in just a bit on this one because glue tends to show on mirror board because of the reflective nature of it. So you keep your glue lines back. There we go. <laughs> and now I'll take that off and turn it around since the bottom of my card is the opening. <laughs> I caught it in time to fix it, though. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Margie has something to show you for next week. I know. I just gave you that job to do, and then I gave you another job to do. Uh, that's usual. <laughs> <laughs> she says that's normal, guys. It is probably absolutely true, too. Margie has your project for next week. Hey, while she's getting ready, let me show you what we're doing Saturday. Oh, I can't wait to show you this. This is just going to be so much fun. I don't have it decorated yet, but this is our little album for Saturday. And it has just, it's just so neat. We are going to make a hinge out of a long piece of paper. And we're going to feed that hinge up through a slot in our pages and then we're going to secure that in place by putting another another page over the top of it it sounds complicated it's not at all but we are going to make these really cute charming little books you'll be surprised how fast it is in fact i actually contemplated making it once i did it making this a thursday project instead because it goes together very, very quickly, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And this matches, this will match and complete our set with our treasure box. Sorry. Thank you. And so that's what we're making on Saturday. Margie's going to come around here and take over. And she is going to show you her project for next week. And then we're going to sign off. So I think I will sign off now, but don't leave. Margie's going to show you her project for next week. So I will just trade you spaces. Okay. Ooh. Don't hit the delete button. <laughs> I'll try to control myself, but you know who I am. Okay, so for next Thursday, um, I use the Lemonade uh, Hot Off the Press pack, paper pack, and I used a couple of tattered lace dies to give me some unique shapes. I can't pull, I can't make it any smaller. Uh, you want to be what? Uh, out. Bring it out. It's on the little button on the side with the clip. There you go. That's not the right one. 
There we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. So um, this one says, when life gives you lemonade, lemons, make premium quality lemonade. <laughs> and, um, and so these were a lot of fun. I tried to think of ways that I can do um, different shapes with the cards to make these papers really stand out and shine. And what I did was a trick uh, with the dies that I used. And as part of the kit, you're going to get two dies. One makes this fun, almost butterfly shape. Uh, but here it just looks like a cloud. So you, it can kind of trick the eye based on where you place it. Here's one. Now you can take a peek if you want through here, but you've also got all of this to look at. Isn't that absolutely cute? It was so much fun to figure this one out. Here's another one with no white. It just changes that shape by doing just little things. It makes it so much more fun and you want to look because you can see something else peeping behind the curtain. Can I tell them how much we're charging for this? Uh, yes. This complete kit, the cards, envelopes, the lemonade paper pack, foam squares, and two tattered lace dies is $19.99 on sale. It's got about $50 worth of stuff in it, but $19.99. We wanted to do something that was nice and light and inexpensive since you guys are purchasing your tattered late I know your um craftaganza kits and they're and it's more expensive this time and this is an art journal that I put together or whatever kind of journal you want to use out of it. It says just a note on the front. This is part of the other die set, the Hayden die set. You can see it here um, where I use this, the actual paper pack. Um, and there is a spot where you can see it in white. Now I can't think of where that is in the moment, but it's there, I promise. Um, and then we've got these with a neat little package of all different kinds of tags and things that someone can use that will match with the papers that are in here. That's really cute, Margie. So that so is what we have. Summary. Yes, it is. And I had a lot of fun writing the, um, <laughs> writing the uh, listing? listing up because it was so much fun to just say, hey, there's lemonade. And it's so listing up now. it is up and it's ready to go. So if okay. you would like to work along with me next week, you should pick up your kit. And again, you get two tattered lace dies in this kit along with all the other supplies and the cards and envelopes and <laughs> and the lemonade paper pack. And it's $19.99. So grab them while they're there. Does anybody have any questions? It looks like some of you have been signing off already. So we will let you go since I'm not seeing any questions pop up. Thank you so much. And I hope that you have a great rest of your evening, guys. Bye. Good night. <laughs>